Hello guys, uh, today we're going to be creating our first git repository in our local computer and then we push that back to the remote repository. We're going to download and install git in the first place in a local computer and then you create account in Bitbucket or GitHub. These are the cloud repositories and then uh, you're going to push your code base uh, to the uh, git repositories. So I'm going to discuss some of these concepts in, in a while. Before we dive into these hands-on sessions, I'm going to I want to share with you some of these advantages why we actually need the Git repository. So Git repositories are centralized, remote and they stay in the cloud place. Okay, Because of that, when multiple people are working in the same code base, uh, you don't need pen drivers or you don't need any other file sharing tools to share the files or changes that you did in your code. You just need to push the changes that you did into the repository, remote repository and that uh, change that you just did, it actually adds to the repository at a version, as a new version. Okay, so each and every change that one of these people in the team is doing a version in the repository with the type. Okay, so because of that, it creates a collaborative environment for the teamwork. Uh, let's discuss another advantage that is keeping the track. So as I just mentioned When multiple people are doing changes to the cloud centralized repository you add uh, Many code versions on top of the repository on top of the existing code, right? So all of these changes that you that you or your team members are doing you can actually see these things in a systematic order you can see there are a bunch of uh, commit messages that means a bunch of changes that the people are doing and if you have a the issue in the code some man here and then you can actually revert back to the code to previous change and revert back the code to the previous version so that's one of the advantage Okay, I'm going to open one of these uh, examples that I, sample repositories that I have. I don't have much commit messages in uh, this repository and each of these messages has their own hash values. Okay, these hash values represent the code change that I did with my commit. So the advantage is you can later, you can see all the changes, what are the files that I sent and the changes in the code that I did. So in this way, you have a way that you can always refer to the changes, not only you, but also the other people who have visibility and accessibility to the core repository can actually view what are the things being committed and what are the things being changed in a repository. Okay. Let's go back to the slide again. Now let's head back to the demonstration. As a first step, you need to download the git and install git in your local computer so let's go ahead to the browser and and then install that in your local computer okay so once you install this one this is where you can see if the everything is fine it's just right click in one of these folders and see if you get these uh, two options and git bash is the where you're gonna type your commands as a second step we're gonna create an account in Bitbucket to github let's go ahead and create a Bitbucket account it doesn't really matter if you use a big Bitbucket or a github as a cloud repository so in, in my case I have both uh, accounts so this is my uh, Bitbucket account and this is my github account so either the github and the Bitbucket both are uh, public repositories github you can view your repositories by right clicking the navigation and all the repositories you can see down there and in the bitbucket you can view all the repositories by clicking here if you are using commercial application development and if you integrate the bitbucket then they provide five views accounts for free okay so you can create a repository and five uh, user members in your team for a free Let's head back to the folder again. I'm going to right click this one and create a file called git ignore. Okay. In the, in a minute's time, I'm going to tell you what is the advantage of creating git ignore file. 
as a first step you create a git tignow.txt okay hit enter so this is a txt file this is a general text file so the reason why you want to create a git tignow file is git tignow file ignoring some of the things which should not be in the cloud repository and we should not be shared between your team members those files are specific to you and your local computer so we'll give you an example in this project i have a folder called node modules and i have a file called package log.json file what i need to do is create a git tignow file and ignore these files which i don't want files and folders both so i have a git tignow file previously created for this project i'm going to copy these things and paste them in my new git tignow file okay so let's save this one let's go back to the folder again i'm going to rename this file to the dot git ignore kernel is a text file so you want to change the format i click the shift and then right click and open my powershell window if you shift and right click then you can open the uh, windows powershell okay i'm going to rename this one txt space to dot git ignore the reason why i'm using powershell for this renaming is i can't do this renaming uh, in the by right clicking and renaming inside my local folder so enter and it will ideally rename to the git ignore you can see the git ignore is created git ignore file must be created at the time you create your repository for the first time that is a that's a best practice if you in case if you forget to define a git ignore file then in the future removing the files again from your repository caching and the track history will be a nightmare so it's always recommended and best practice is to create a git ignore file for the first time when you initiate a repository so i right click this one and open the git bash okay then in the git bash first i need to initialize the repository the command to initialize the repository is git space init and just it initiated the empty git repository you can see this folder just turned up so this is the git folder which stores all the changes that you're going to do in your local computer for the local repository okay so notice this file wherever you see this, this folder then you can identify this folder belongs to one uh, some git repository as the next step the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to add these files as git space add space and dot and then hit enter so it will add all the files to the a local repository after i add these files to the local repository i can see the status typing git space status so you can see the list of the files here they are ready to be staged and that's why they are in the green color okay and then i need to commit this list of files to be pushed so before I push them to the remote repository, I need to commit this in my local repository. So the command is easy, like git commit dash m. Dash m means I can give a message, m for the message. And I'm going to say first commit. Okay. Whatever the message that you want to give to your uh, change, it relate, should be related to the to the change that you did and in industry environment it should be ideally you can add your issue number that you are working with if you are working with jira or any other issue tracking tools you can do something like jira dash one two three to mention the issue tracking number okay in my case i'm not going to do that because i'm not attaching to any jira task tracking tool yet and then i'm going to add this one to my logo so you can see everything is created after commit so before we push this one we need to have a remote repository so then i log into my bitbucket account okay i'm going to add 
Explore the repository and create a new repository using this option. You can give a name. Uh, my first repo. Okay, give a meaningful name in your repository. This is for the demonstration perspective. And um, I not this is a private repository, and this uh, I don't need a readme file because I already have a readme file in my folder. And just create the repo. Scroll down. You don't see anything yet in here because the file is not being copied. It, what this command means, you are adding a link to your remote repository from the local repository, and then you're gonna link these two guys together. Gonna paste that in here and hit enter so it will link the repository and then i'm going to push my files git push dash u origin master master is a branch name so in the first time when you don't have any other branches very first time whatever you commit whatever you push to the remote repository is actually pushing to the master branch so hit enter and it will push the file it will have asked for the authentication ideally yeah it asked for my password and i'm going to give my password hit enter so you just push the files let's refresh the page I just turned up my latest file base there are a few things to notice here. You can see some of the folders are missing in this list, obviously, because we ignore them using a gitignor file. End of today's video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Thank you. Cheers.